hello. Welcome to <laughs> <laughs> welcome to Drama Shop Curtain Call 2022 and the announcement of our next season. I am Gretchen Kerr, and I am the incoming um, um, Board of Governors President, which I'm very excited about. Thank you. And I'd like to thank Matt Fuchs, who um, is the outgoing president for all his service. He can be here tonight, but um, we certainly thank him for his leadership and guidance. Um, his yes. um, I, my job tonight is just to welcome you and to introduce people that you really don't need any introduction for, but I will do my best to do that. Um, so I'm going to introduce Zach Block who is the outgoing, although he meant not outgoing in his personality, but he's the <laughs> outgoing, um, the outgoing um, artistic director, director, every person. Yes, of Drama Shop. So this is his last curtain call. It's a very bittersweet time for us in our Drama Shop community, but he has set us up for a lot of success. And so we're very, very, very grateful for Zach. And I will hand it over to him. I'm going to awkwardly advance the slide to my own name. <laughs> I didn't think of how vain that would feel until I was here in the moment. Thank you, Gretchen. And also, Gretchen, thank you for throwing a wonderful party. Um, Gretchen is also the chair of our marketing and development committee. Um, and also, thanks to Ken Brundage, uh, who I saw come in a little while ago with a cart full of beer. I yes. uh, can't go wrong there. So, Ken Gretchen bought it. Gretchen bought it. Ken, yeah. uh, whatever. I mean, you brought it in. That's the important thing. And two bags of ice. And two bags of ice. Good, good. We are set. Um, thank you all for coming tonight uh, to our curtain call. It is an honor to stand here before you as we celebrate the end of another incredible season of theater in process. Drama Shop has always been a forward moving organization always moving on from one production to the next, um, rarely looking back. Those of you who know me know that I don't often get uh, overly sentimental about productions. I'm always excited to move on to whatever the next project is. But tonight is that rare moment where we pause at the end of a season and we take a look back at all of the hard work that has gone into the past year. And a lot of hard work has gone into this past year. Um, of course, tonight also marks, as, as Gretchen said, my last curtain call as artistic director. But tonight is not about that. Tonight is about celebrating all of the many members of the Drama Shop community. You are all Drama Shop. And to quote or paraphrase Angels in America, the great work continues. The great work starts with our Board of Governors, the team who provide big picture direction, financial oversight, and leadership. Members of the board, please give us a wave, if you would, so that we can acknowledge you. Thank you all. And the work continues with the efforts of our creative team. They are the steadfast warriors whose unrelenting dedication ensures that the work gets done. They are artists, administrators, marketers, and the stewards of our organization. They are essentially my cabinet, my creative advisors, and my cohorts. I am especially grateful to them for stepping up when I moved away with very little notice mid-season. And while I've continued to provide direction from afar, they are the ones who've been on the ground doing all of the work. Please indulge me as I thank each of our current creative team members by name. Associate Artistic Director Elena Manchester, who's at home with a newborn baby. Managing Director Anna McJunkin. Community Involvement Manager Zach Hoffman. Where's Zach? There he is. There he is. Marketing Manager Nicole Lossi. Box Office and Sales Manager Marshall Mack. Facility Manager BJ Wade. Technical Director Julie Lukahi. There's Julie. There's Julie. Um, and Creative Advisors Monica Harden, Justin Carnes, and Patrick Thiem. We also have an outstanding group of volunteers on every production. I will name them all now. Um, Anna, yeah, thanks for having a seat. Um, 
we won't name them all individually. We will recognize each of the productions from our last season. Um, but first, I do want to take a minute to talk about the unsung heroes of this season, our patrons. Rewind to 2011, Drama Shop's first season. If you had told me that someday we would require audience members and volunteers to show us they received a particular vaccine to be admitted to our theater, I'm really not sure what I would have said, but um, the phrase Orwellian gets thrown around a lot in situations like that. And I certainly would not have believed that audiences would ever need to, or frankly agree to, wear face masks as they watch productions at Drama Shop. And yet that's what our audiences have done when asked for much of the past season. We took that extraordinary step, as did many local theaters, of requiring proof of vaccination and we were thrilled that our audiences willingly complied. We required masks through most of the season and continue to adjust based on transmission levels, and our audiences continue to adjust with us. These were the steps necessary to return to in-person theater. And while it may have made for slightly, a slightly longer check-in process, I am grateful that our audiences willingly complied and have shown up in numbers large enough to, as of this morning, surpass our ticket sales goal for the season. And I want to mention, we actually canceled a production, right? So there were seven performances that we had expected to happen and then canceled. And without that income from those seven productions, we still met the previous ticket sales goal. So live theater is back and audiences are returning to Drama Shop and we are so grateful to you for that. Um, so I truly want to thank all of you for doing your part to keep yourself each other and the entire community safe. Thank you for that. And now let's talk about the season that was. Let's talk about me some more. <laughs> this, <Last dance. laughs> that's right. That's right. Get it in while we can. Uh, this season, anticipating that we might not be in the clear in September, which new er, newsflash we weren't, we opted to start our season off online with a streaming only production of a drama shop original, um, one that I happened to author. Um, one of the perks of being artistic director, Anna, something to look forward to. I'm honored and still a little surprised to have been given the opportunity to produce my original play, Confluence, directed by dear friend, Sean Clerkin. Would the cast of, and crew of Confluence please stand or give a wave to be recognized? Next, we had Moby Dick the Musical. In October, we were ready to come back to the theater. And what a better time to return to in-person theater than 10 years to the day of our inaugural production, Reasons to be Pretty. And what a better show to return with than an irreverent comedy I've wanted to direct since I had the chance to act in college in this show many, not that many years ago. <laughs> right, Emily? <laughs> Emily. <laughs> it was an interesting rehearsal process. The cast wore masks for all rehearsals, including vocals. Fun, Kate, right? Um, until final dress rehearsal. We had the weirdest rehearsal schedule ever, allowing for downtime in between rehearsals in case anybody had to isolate because of close contact. We choreographed most of the show in one very long weekend with two a day rehearsals. It was an unconventional process in order to produce a big musical as COVID surged once again. It wasn't easy, but thanks to the dedication of the cast and crew, we were getting through it. But let me tell you, it does not feel great to drive toward the theater for rehearsal <laughs> about two weeks before opening and see black smoke billowing in the sky and then see flames literally leaping out of the sidewalk as you approach the building. Thankfully, uh, thanks to our friends at the Playhouse, we moved literally that night to the Erie Playhouse rehearsal hall. The show was coming together, the props and costumes were assembled, and yet the set sat unfinished in a dark theater, no power. We got back into the theater on October 6th and Moby Dick opened on October 12th with our Thank You 10 reception. I need to thank a couple of folks in the room in particular, Julie once again, Marshall once again, 
Anna once again, Zach, I believe you were one of the folks who snuck in with us as well. Um, we, we maybe uh, came in before the power was on and did just a tiny bit of painting. This isn't going out live anymore. Right? <laughs> um, thankfully, the show came together on time and we opened on the 10 year anniversary of our inaugural production. Neither COVID nor underground utility fires nor a leak in the ceiling could cause us, could stop us. Yes, as we returned to the theater and worked on the set, right there, you can see the plaster hanging down, the ceiling started leaking as the power was brought back on in the building. It was a very interesting tech week. Moby Dick was the overwhelming hit we hoped it would be, and the cast and crew deserve another bow. Please, let's give a round of applause to the cast and crew and pit of Moby Dick. The music. An interesting footnote, um, let's make it about me some more. The, the last role I played as a Gannon student was as Ahab and headmistress in Moby Dick. And though I didn't know it at the time, Moby Dick was my final directing uh, position at Drama Shop. So it will forever be a weird show to be sentimental about. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we had the Antipodes, the Antipodes, whatever, however you want to say it. We say it both ways. I, I don't think we ever decided. Um, we got back into the business of in-person staged readings with a quintessential Annie Baker play, The Antipodes. By this time, we'd pretty much gotten used to masking for rehearsals and putting on shows that met the high level of quality our audiences have come to expect. I'll be blunt, not enough people saw this show. And if you missed it, you really missed out. Let's hear it for the incredible cast and crew of The Antipodes. <laughs> Next up, and I don't have a slide for this one, was Live From Drama Shop, Ugly Sweater Party. <laughs> I see a lot of folks who were involved in that laughing. Um, yeah, it was an experience. So we opted this year to take our annual tradition, uh, annual tradition of an ugly sweater party and make it a little bit high tech. We blended it with our uh, Live From Drama Shop format and we produced a live three camera variety show with a studio audience. There were games, a drag queen singing Santa Baby, prizes, ugly sweaters, beers, BJ taking an unfortunate header off the stage, followed by a really long commercial break. She's okay. Me completely <laughs> skipping Kate Theme's song and a lot of crazy silliness. It was a, a really a blast while we were doing it, despite the ups and downs. And I wish we'd gotten to do more of them, but um, you know, I decided to move and life had other plans. I do hope it's something that continues um, in the future. Thank you all for indulging my late night talk show fantasies. And thank you to the incredible crew who made it possible. Most of us had no TV production experience, but we were determined to figure it out. I also want you all to know that uh, while the show was that evening, we had a run through earlier that day. It was the first run through and it was a disaster and i think i'm being generous the the video switcher wasn't picking up the camera it's every literally you name it it wasn't working right it was a nightmare but it came together and if there's anything more indicative of live theater i don't know what it is so thank you to the cast and crew and everyone involved with live from drama shop After a little shuffling to avoid yet another COVID spike, our production of Eurydice was delayed until April. Instead, we skipped ahead to our March production of Horse Girls, which opened just as Erie's COVID numbers thankfully came back down to earth. It also opened the week that Jess and I moved out of Erie. I'm especially grateful to Gretchen, who directed, the cast and crew, and everyone involved. I provided very little support, if any, for that production, and when I came back the second weekend to see the show, I was absolutely delighted. Gretchen and the crew showed what a staged reading can be without overdoing it. So really nicely done, Gretchen. <laughs> Congratulations to the cast and crew of Horse Girls. <laughs> what are you saying back there? I said I've never been known to be subtle. <laughs> That's right. I mean, it didn't really call for subtlety, so it was a good pairing. Then we tried something else new because, you know, why should anything be easy, right? 
In late March, Anna produced the first ever Drama Shop Shorts Festival, and the response was overwhelming, literally overwhelming to the folks working the doors as well. Two nights of performances proved to not be enough, even with the live streaming option or the ability to watch it on demand. For the production, we applied lessons we'd learned during the Ugly Sweater Party and last season's Natural Shocks to produce these short plays for both in-house and at-home audiences. It was a terrific event featuring local playwrights, directors, and actors working together. Anna will tell you more about our plans for upcoming seasons, but I suspect there are more Drama Shop originals to come. Fair to say? Fair to say. Please join me in saluting the many, many people involved in the inaugural Drama Shop Shorts Festival. Yeah. Eurydice. This show had long been on my bucket list. Back in January, we talked through the set, came up with a concept, and Anna and BJ were ready to go. Then, of course, it was delayed. I moved. Some cast and crew roles changes. And... Quite honestly, I was a little bit nervous about how it was all going to go. I can sometimes be a control freak. <laughs> Jess. <laughs> so I was in the unique position as artistic director of not seeing the show until it had already opened. And it was breathtaking. Powerful performances, beautiful design elements, all of it done on drama shop terms, no overreaching, just the right amount and right combination of theatrical magic. If you missed Eurydice, you missed a quintessential drama shop show. Let's hear it for the cast and crew of Eurydice. <laughs> and finally, three years after we announced it, two years after we first planned to perform it, two years after we'd begun constructing the set, and two directors later, we finally opened everybody. Full disclosure, I haven't seen it yet, but I have seen the photos, read the reviews, and had many conversations with members of the company as well as patrons. I can't wait to see it. I mean, just look at that beautiful set. So please join me in a round of applause for the cast and crew of Everybody, directed by Courtney Wyatt. If everybody and Eurydice are representative of the work you can expect to see from Drama Shop going forward, and I believe they are, I can say with absolute certainty that Drama Shop is in great hands. In addition to the many individuals who were part of each individual production, I know there were also many of you who contributed in, in other ways, helping with strikes and builds, painting sets, moving platforms, and moving seating from the Schuster Theater to Drama Shop, hauling props and instruments back and forth and back and forth between the Playhouse Rehearsal Hall and Drama Shop during a few particularly stressful weeks, dodging Penelec along the way. <laughs> Coming off of two very unique and innovative seasons, we could have gone small, but instead we went really big. We and you were determined to get to getting back to doing the thing that we love, live in-person theater. This season has not been easy, but I can tell you, artistically, financially, and organizationally, Drama Shop's 2021-2022 season has been an incredible success. For that, each and every one of you deserve a round of applause. As we end this season, we have several board members who have reached, who have either reached the end of their terms or who have opted not to continue on the board. We also have several new board members, and I'll let Anna tell you more about that in a moment. But please join me in thanking Janae Butler, Alex Holbrook, and Kate Thiem for their service to the board. I know they'll continue to be supportive and involved in other ways. Thank you all for your service. We also have two founding members leaving the board as they've moved from, e from the Erie area. Father Sean Clerken was, of course, instrumental in our founding and has been a personal and professional mentor to me for literally decades. He was a founding board member, departed for a little while, then rejoined the board a few years ago. Can we, even though he's not here, let's do a round of applause for Erie's best actor, Sean Clerken. <laughs> I also want to recognize our longest serving and longest suffering board member, who also happens to be my wife, Jessica Flock. 
She was a founding board member, served as secretary and treasurer for several terms, has directed, costumed, and acted, and even occasionally been roped into helping me paint, despite her best efforts. Um, her angel wings are second to none. For her work as a founding board member and for doing the toughest job of all, putting up with me, Jess deserves perhaps the biggest round of applause. Yes. Finally, I'd like to recognize two board members who, while they will continue to serve on the board, will no longer serve as officers because of term limits, that pesky bylaws. Uh, they are two of our longest serving board members and both were involved as performers in our very first season. They're terrific leaders and I'm grateful to count them as friends. After our December board meeting, I let them know, uh, I let Ken and Matt know that I was thinking very seriously about next season, season 12, being my final season here at Drama Shop as artistic director. They were disappointed, perhaps surprised, but I think they understood that at some point I would be ready to step aside. I'd been very vocal about my desire to share responsibility, to, to delegate, and to prepare the next generation of Drama Shop leadership. I told them I'd think on it a little more and then probably let them know for sure at the March board meeting. I told them Jess and I were, were hoping to move to the Pittsburgh area to be closer to family, but that I didn't plan to start looking until sometime next year. Life had other plans, and a month later, I let them know that I was interviewing for a position, though it was probably a long shot. A few weeks after that, I emailed them my letter of resignation, effective a week from today, actually. They have been class acts always. They are professionals, they are trusted advisors, skilled leaders, and we are so lucky to have them on our board. So while they will, will no longer be officers, I have no doubt they will play an important role as we move through this transition. All that to say, Matt and Ken, thank you. And now for the State of Drama Shop. I stand here before you to say the State of Drama Shop is stronger than ever. Ticket sales surpassed goals. Attendance exceeded expectations. Production designs pushed the boundaries of what we can do on our small stage. More work is being done by more people, meaning less work done by me, which is awesome. I've done remarkably little from Moby Dick on, and it's been really nice, I'm not gonna lie. A number of new performers, volunteers, and audience members showed up and stuck around. The makeup of our cast, crew, and leadership is more reflective than ever of the makeup of our community. Our lobby even got a makeover, partially while power was out. <laughs> Thanks, Marshall. New paint, our logo wall, and our door wrap, another poster wall. Most importantly, Drama Shop is a place, and a cool one at that. We have a new lighting truss on the way to replace the second truss we've been renting. Now we just have to pay for it. And to that end, you knew it was coming. I just checked, and so far we have raised $18,136 as of about 4.30 today. The goal is uh, $20,000, which means by June 30th, we need to raise $1,864. Um, I want to mention a couple of things. Um, I know many of you have already donated, and that's awesome. I also want to let you know um, we have a piece of art um, designed by Rebecca Kopik um, that is on the, the theme of our production, Everybody. Um, we are selling raffle tickets for that. Those tickets also count toward um, our supporting players total. So that's a great way um, where you can potentially win some really cool, original, one-of-a-kind art and also support uh, the supporting players drive. At a time when arts organizations are struggling to rebound from COVID, we continue to weather this storm and emerge stronger than ever haven't donated yet, please do. Um, one thing is to match your previous year's donation. If you've never donated before and you want to start small, maybe consider donating $11 in recognition of the end of our 11th season. If you want to donate another way, I already mentioned the raffle. Sorry, I should actually read my notes. Um, bottom line is we depend on ending the year with a balanced budget. So that uh, $1,864 is really important and I have confidence that we will get there. 
Um, we made our donation, and I hope that all of you will as well. So thank you. And the last thing you'll hear from me, because I know you're really here to hear what Anna has to say anyway, um, is thank you. When Reasons to be Pretty opened on October 12th, 2011, there were 31 people in the audience. Opening night was the biggest night, 31 people. There were 13 people in the audience the second night, 18 the third, and just eight people a performance for the final two shows, 78 people total. We covered our expenses, but that was about it. But most importantly, we did what we set out to do. Sorry. We were filling a niche that was left vacant by the unfortunate closing of other theaters that had come before us. We only did two main stage shows that first year, um, Reasons to be Pretty, and the second was The Pillow Man. We had hoped for slightly better numbers than Reasons to be Pretty with The Pillow Man, and we got them. In fact, just over the course of that season, we more than doubled our audience size from our first production to our second production. And the reason for that, again, is all of you supporting the work that we do. With that, Drama Shop was up and running. Not every show has been a hit. We've all been there for houses that could best be described as sparse. Um, at times, I believe there have been more people on stage than in the audience, which is really unfortunate with a stage this small. But we've done the work and we've seen, we've also seen entirely sold out runs. We've added performances and we've had the best problem in the world, having to turn people away and ask them to please come back another night. We did what we set out to do and we did it together. Truly, it has been the honor of my lifetime and I'm forever grateful. Thank you. And now, it is my pleasure to introduce Drama Shop's next artistic director, my friend, Anna McJunkin. Well, I was about to say thank you, but... <laughs> thank you, Zach. You're welcome. <laughs> Um, when I look back on the first day that Zach and I met, um, it's so hard to believe how much has changed since then. I hadn't been doing theater in Erie for very long. I had just heard of Drama Shop for the first time, and it came up here and auditioned for Fun Home. And anyone who knows me has probably heard that I have terrible, debilitating audition anxiety. So I was in an unfamiliar place in front of complete strangers auditioning for a show I already loved, and you know what happened? Zach had me do a cold reading of the most anxious, awkward scene in the whole show, and um, I will say it's the only reason that I was cast. <laughs> I nailed it. <laughs> he probably thought that visible trembling was just a good physical acting choice. Nope. <laughs> and look where we are now. Because of Zach and all of the incredible people who have mentored me throughout the last few years, I've had the opportunity to grow in confidence as a performer, as a leader, and as an artist. And in case you still have any reservations, although 10 years apart, Zach and I both performed in our first musicals when we were in fifth grade, and we both played one of the King's children in the kingdom. So we're basically the same person, right? Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> So thank you again, Zach, for this incredible gift you've given me and the Erie community. I know I'm not alone when I say that my life has been changed because of you and the work you've done with Drama Shop. <laughs> so on with the show. First, we have a few announcements regarding the Drama Shop board and creative team for the upcoming season. We are happy to welcome three new board members, Jade Mitchell and former creative team members Patrick Thiem and BJ Wade. <laughs> Well, we are excited to share changes to our executive committee on our board of officers. Um, Gretchen Kerr, who has served as secretary, will succeed Matt Fuchs as drama shop president, which I'm really excited about. Um, board member Lisa Simonian will follow Ken Brundage as vice president. Courtney Wyatt will assume the role of secretary from Gretchen Kerr. And Brittany Shaw, who served a partial term following Sean Perkins' resignation, will now serve a full term as treasurer. Thank you. 
and creative team. I would also like to announce some changes and additions to the creative team. I look forward to working with the entire team to continue to grow and improve upon Drama Shop's successes. As I serve as Artistic Director, Elena Manchester will continue to serve as Associate Artistic Director and Chief Artistic Advisor. Additionally, Marshall Mack and Zach Coffin's roles have been more clearly defined with Zach serving as Artistic Associate for Community Engagement and Marshall serving as Artistic Associate for Box Office and Administration. Um, the four of us will make up the senior leadership team aided by Nicole Lossie as Marketing Manager and Julia Lakahi as Technical Director. Returning members Monica Hardin and Justin Carnes will continue to serve as Creative Advisors. I'm also pleased to welcome four new members to Creative Team, filling vacancies left by Zach Clark, BJ Wade, and Pat Beam. Those new members are Karen Bible, Brian Bowersox, Alicia Olivar, and Kate Beam. You, you might have noticed we, we switched the themes. <laughs> yeah, we did a theme swap. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah one side traded up. I <laughs> I'm excited to share that once again, we will be providing many opportunities for community engagement, including another great slate of titles for the Drama Shop Book Club. Look for an announcement later this summer with Book Club expected to resume in September. We're also planning other programming like workshops and lectures and opportunities for aspiring writers. Plus, now that we won't be so busy producing, now that he, sorry, <laughs> won't be so busy producing and directing shows, our founding artistic director will be focusing his time and energy on producing a regular schedule of episodes of our Shop Talk podcast. <laughs> and now on to what you... <laughs> now on to what you really want to hear about the 2022 to 23 season. Our first production of the season is an American mythology musical set to a blistering rock score with a sound owing less to Sondheim and Andrew Lloyd Webber than to bands like Bikini Kill, The Runaways, and Heart. It's an all-female cast fronting a six-piece band in a hybrid show that's part rock concert, part psychological thriller, and all theater. The first show of the 2022 to 23 season is Lizzie the Musical by Stephen Cheslick DeMeyer, team... Uh, Tim Maynard, and Alan Stevens Hewitt. Uh, yeah. Thank you, I need a new break. In the late summer of 1892, Lizzie Borden was accused of murdering her father and stepmother with an ax. Testimonies were muddled, evidence was incomplete, and Lizzie was acquitted. Lizzie the Musical delves into the mysterious mind of Lizzie Borden and speculates on the motivation she may have had, loss of inheritance, history of sexual abuse, overwhelming oppression, and madness. By her side is her older sister Emma, maid Bridget, and neighbor Alice. Together, the four women create a punk rock score to tell the story of why Lizzie Borden took an axe and gave her mother 40 wax, and why when she saw what she had done, gave her father 41. An ideal show for a theater company with an edge and an opportunity to showcase powerful female performers, Lizzie the Musical is a rock album of an iconic historical moment in American legend and lore. Beginning with our season opening event, Friday, September 23rd, the performance will be preceded by a reception to welcome the drama shop community back into the theater to kick off the 2022-23 to season. After the opening night celebration, uh, the show will run for six more performances, Saturday, September 24th through Sunday, October 9th. Lizzie the Musical, opening September 23rd at Drama Shop. <laughs> Our first stage reading is a play that raises probing questions about how and why organized religion can be a divisive, if not abusive, social force. It handles a complex and intellectual debate in a relatable way that shows the human and real consequences of choices based in spirituality. The show is The Christians by Lucas Nath. <laughs> Twenty years ago, Pastor Paul's church was nothing more than a modest storefront. Now he presides over a congregation of thousands with classrooms for Sunday school, a coffee shop in the lobby, and a baptismal font as big as a swimming pool. Today should be a day of celebration, but Paul is about to preach a sermon that will shake the foundations of his church's belief. A big little play about faith in America and the trouble with changing your mind. 
opening Friday, November 11th, and playing for two weekends. Our first stage reading of the season is an engrossing conversation about truth, faith, morality, and how our beliefs connect and separate us from a global community. The Christians, part of our Pay What You Can stage reading series, November 11th through 19th at Drama Shop. Our main stage series continues in December with an energetic all-male comedy and an opportunity for us to do a deep dive into the costume closet and dust off our Santa suit. <laughs> the Crumple Zone by Buddy Thomas. <laughs> this hilarious off-Broadway hit set in a rundown apartment on Staten Island concerns three gay roommates coming to a crisis during one frantic Christmas weekend. Terry, an out-of-work actor who can't keep a job or get a date, spends his days swilling cheap vodka and playing referee to a messy love triangle. Extremely funny and deeply moving, The Crumple Zone is about staying together, breaking apart, and the things we lose along the way. The show will run from Friday, December 2nd to Sunday, December 18th. The Crumple Zone by Buddy Thomas, December 2022 at Drama Shop. Our third main stage, main stage production is scheduled to happen in February, and we really hope to stick to that plan this year. You've heard about the show before, and we think it's about time you actually get to see it. We're excited to finally present Incognito by Nick Payne. <laughs> From the author of Constellations. Four actors play a combined 21 characters within Incognito's three interwoven stories. A pathologist steals the brain of Albert Einstein. A neuro neuropsychologist embarks on her first romance with another woman. A seizure patient forgets everything but how much he loves his girlfriend. Incognito braids these mysterious stories into one breathtaking whole that asks whether memory and identity are nothing but illusions. Incognito finally opens Friday, February 3rd, and runs through Sunday, February 19th. Coming to Drama Shop in February 2023, Incognito by Nick Payne. In March and April, our second staged reading of the season takes the stage. This play asks provocative and profound questions about women's sexual desire and how it's derailed by busy lives, self-image, and fear of failure. Join us for The Pleasure Trials by Sarah Saltwick. <laughs> when Rachel and Callie start clinical trials on their new female libido enhancement drug, willing participants come out of the woodwork looking for an internal revolution. Quickly after the first dose, the effectiveness of the medicine is undeniable. But the overwhelming pressure for its success may corrupt the experiment and everyone involved. Just three characters and all great roles for women, two conflicting scientists and one, one woman who plays everybody else. Creative ways of showing scientific work with visuals and sound and a look at the ethics of new drug development. The most moving part is an honest range of women's experiences with sex, ranging from boredom to hints of desire to guiltily trying to please their partners, fearful disappointment, and glorious transporting joy. The Pleasure Trials by Sarah Saltwick part of the stage reading series opening March 24th, 2023. All right, if you've been waiting to hear about opportunities for local writers, listen up, because we have an update on our Drama Shop Originals programming. In 2020, we produced the Blue Ball Monologues. In 2021, Zach Box Confluence. And 2022, we held the inaugural Drama Shop Shorts Festival. We've decided to keep the Shorts Festival going, but rather than doing it yearly, we're planning to do it every other year in order to allow for plays of varying lengths. We're going to alternate the Drama Shop Shorts Festival with the Drama Shop One Act Festival. A logical progression from the Blue Bowl Monologues and the Drama Shop Shorts Festival, we will launch our biennial Drama Shop One Act Festival featuring short plays written, directed, and performed by local artists. This original event will be performed for a live audience in the theater and streamed live. Additionally, it will be available for on-demand viewing after the fact. Due to the overwhelming success we experienced with the Drama Shop Shorts Festival, 
and the unanimous feedback received from the huge number of volunteer artists it takes to put on a fully original production, we decided to add a second weekend of performances to our Drama Shop original series. The One Act Festival will open Friday, April 21st, and close Saturday, April 29th, for a total of four performances. The Drama Shop One Act Festival, in person, in late April 2023, and streaming on demand in May. One more show to go. I'm forgetting to breathe. <laughs> I should have warned you. <laughs> <laughs> the past few years, we've used Drama Shop Book Club as a way of gauging interest and discussing great new plays. We're very excited to bring one of the titles from last year's book club to the page. Or, oh my gosh. From the page to the stage. That's, that's Zach's fault. For <laughs> <laughs> Actors usually read their lines ahead of time. Oh, I did. <laughs> really? I did. Actually. Actors, Pat. I said, oh, 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 I'll tell you what Pitt is later. <laughs> that's, that's actually a callback to the Shop Talk episode that I did with Leah Matthew, isn't it? I have no memory of that. <laughs> Play along. <laughs> Our final production of the 2022-23 to 23 season will be Kingdom Come by Jenny and Rachel Wiener. From the author of another wildly successful drama shop production, Horse Girls. Samantha is lonely and confined to her bed. Lainey is shy and too afraid of the world to journey into it. But when these two 30-somethings connect through an online dating site, they fall for each other fast and hard. What could go wrong? Considering that they're both pretending to be someone else, the short answer is everything. When people are free to project any version of themselves they wish, who knows where reality ends and fantasy begins. Our new digital world is upended in Kingdom Come. Jenny Rachel Wiener's blisteringly funny and all too relatable comedy about what happens when the feelings are real, but the people are not. Funny, affecting, and sensitively drawn with surprising twists the show opens Friday, June 9th, and runs through Sunday, June 25th. Closing out Drama Shop's 12th season in June 2023, Kingdom Come by Jenny Rachel Wiener. So here we have a recap for you. Our 2023 to, or 22 to 23 Drama Shop season is Lizzie the Musical, The Christians, The Crumple Zone, Incognito, the Pleasure Trials, the Drama Shop One Act Festival, and Kingdom Come. Join us soon for another exciting year of theater in process. That's all. Go eat and drink. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, That's okay. it. Yeah. Okay. Unless you have questions. Your questions? <laughs> Thank you.